First things first, I wanna thank Cody from Mac Telecom Networks, subscribe to his YouTube channel, by the way, Scott and Brian for your donations because without you guys, this video would not be possible. With your donation, I bought this AVIO USB capture device. And that's what we're gonna be using today in this video. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Think of this video more like a technical demonstration, not so much a how-to or the best way to capture video or encode video. I'm just demonstrating the capability that the M1 Pro has, and that's what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna be setting up OBS to capture video with using this capture device, and we're gonna be encoding that video and sending it off to Twitch. And I'll show you three different games to give you an idea about what you could expect while using the hardware encoder built into the M1 Pro. Some of the hardware we'll be using for this video is of course a MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro on board, the AV.io Epifan USB capture device, and of course a gaming computer, which specs are pretty much irrelevant for this because all of the encoding will actually be happening on the M1 Pro's hardware encoder. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what you could expect first, and then towards the end of the video, I'll actually show you um, what software settings I've enabled for the streams that you're about to see. Let's check it out. Oh my gosh, come on. There we go. Heck yeah. All right. Really? Really? That's right. Two in a row, baby. Two in a row. Yeah. Yeah, because the pistol has the explosive rounds. Look at this guy just worming around. What the heck is he doing? What the heck? He was just like laying down and running around the thing. I'm not sure if I'm hitting this guy. These explosive rounds are awesome. All right, we're not, we're barely hitting him. We're gonna have to get closer. Oh God, I fell. Jump. Oh, it's a turret. Oh boy. Oh boy. Did you imagine getting mauled by a uh, leopard? And then just like being able to like get up and walk it off? That'd be terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wait. Let's go hunt him. And then on top of that, like, you're just able to get up and run around, pull out your bow. After taking a look at those three separate streams, I think we can all agree that the frame rate seems to be struggling a bit there at the higher frame rate games, specifically Rocket League. So while watching Rocket League, we did see some stuttering or maybe frame drops. And I'm not sure if that's because the gaming computer can do 100, I'm sorry, 200 plus FPS in Rocket League, or if it's because the AV.io USB capture device is only capable of doing 1080p 60 frames per second. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which, which side of the issue this is on, but that's something that I think that we saw. Now, obviously, if you have different capture hardware, you may see wildly different results. Uh, but we're really just gonna focus on the quality here. Uh, so that way we can get a better idea of what the actual hardware controller or hardware encoder is um, responsible for. It's really responsible for the encoding, not so much the frame rate because the frame rate is gonna be limited by the capture device and mine's only 60. So I don't think that's a problem with the encoder. I think that's more of a problem with the actual device or the communication between the gaming computer and the capture device. 
So with quality uh, in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual settings that I use in OBS to accomplish this. So here on the screen, I have a live um, capture going on and I'm gonna go ahead and click on settings here in the bottom right corner. The first thing we'll take a look at is Outlook and our output, not Outlook. So here in the output under streaming, um, these are the settings I use for all three of those streams. We uh, of course are using the Apple H.264 hardware encoder. We're using a bit rate of 50,000. This is YouTube centric, so keep that in mind when we're looking at these. Uh, other streaming services like Twitch and Mixer, if that still exists, use different um, bit rates and different keyframes and, I don't know, B frames. So just keep that in mind. Now for our keyframe interval, I did one. I believe YouTube actually recommends two, but I'm not entirely sure. For profile, I used high and main. I didn't see a difference between the two, but for the three videos that you saw, with, I used main for those, and of course have B frames enabled. And that's really there all is to show with the actual output settings here. Um, the only other thing of significance, of course, is under video. And so here in video, I have the base canvas at, of course, 1920 by 1080, because that is what my resolution is of my uh, gaming setup here. And we're just outputting that to 1920 by 1080 as well. And we're trying to hit a target of 60 FPS, and that's the value that we have set there. And that's really all that we have set up in the actual OBS software. There's really not much else to it. There is a software encoder available, but I don't see the point of using that when we have a dedicated hardware encoder available to us in the M1 lineup. I believe it's also an M2. It would be really weird if they removed it from the M2 chip. So, um, the M1 Pro is obviously very capable of doing hardware encoding, which is great if you have a spare Mac laying around that you're trying to get more use out of. Uh, maybe not specifically for streaming to YouTube or Twitch uh, or one of the other services, but just you know, knowing that it's capable of doing some pretty nice uh, encoding in H.264, of course. So with all that being said, I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Again, this wasn't supposed to be a technical how-to, it's more of a just hey, this is how uh, the encoder and this is how good of a job it does. And it's not entirely overly technical, um, just a, a pure, simple demonstration of the capability of the M1 Pro chip. Uh, and it's probably, it could be more capable, it could be less capable, don't know. Those are the settings I ran with because those are the settings recommended by YouTube and that's what we got. So uh, thanks again to Scott, Cody, and Brian for your donations. Uh, because without you guys, this video would not be possible. And for everyone else, thank you all for watching, uh, because without you guys, all of these videos would not be possible. So, peace.